you know, is there another way to make this work so that both sides can be happy, Senator Gregg? I mean, look at, the, for example, Massachusetts and what they were able to, to do there by requiring every individual, if you're going to live in that state, to have health insurance. Is there something like that that could be done that might involve sort of a, more of the individual as opposed to government? Well, uh, you know, an individual mandate, which is what you're referring to, is, is government. <laughs> it's a pretty strong government telling people they have to go out and do something. But I think the problem, the fundamental problem here is that you're trying to create a massive new entitlement, which is going to cost one to two trillion dollars over a ten year period. One trillion in the first ten years, two trillion in the second ten years, according to CBO. That's a huge increase in the size of the government. And trying to close that, in other words, trying to close it with taxes or with spending cuts, is really difficult. And another thing you've got to remember here, if there are tax increases here, and there are tax increases in the Bacchus bill, and he's very forthright about it, it's about over $300 billion of new taxes. If there are tax increases or spending cuts, and there's $500 billion of, of reductions in Medicare spending in this bill, as I understand it, or mostly Medicare spending, which is basically taken to fund this new entitlement, that those resources are being used to expand the government, not to pay down the debt, not to make the government more affordable in the out years. And those are resources, therefore, that if you wanted to pursue them, are not going to be available to address this out of your debt issue, which is huge and, and a very significant problem for us as a nation. And Sen uh, Senator Merkel, your colleague Ron Wyden from Oregon has proposed greater choice by deregulating insurance across state lines. A lot of people are favoring that. A lot of senators favor that. Some think that could pass. Is that in Mr. Baucus's bill? I'm not hearing that. True you know, deregulation across state lines? You know, before I address that, let me just say my, my colleague misidentifies the problem. The problem is the status quo we have right now with costs doubling every six years, with no coverage for pre-existing condition, no access for, access for many folks. Many folks dumped off health care as soon as they have a, a problem. So the budget buster is plan A, the Republican plan of continuing the broken status quo. We have got to take on those broken elements if we're going to have health care not only affordable to our budget, but affordable to our families. Yes, but Senator Murphy, is now the time? I mean, look, at we're trying to come out of the worst recession since the Great Depression. Is now the time to be enacting such an ambitious plan? Well, now is the time because our small businesses are saying it's really a problem for them to be able to continue to attract good personnel. Our large businesses are saying our current health care system, our budget busting status quo, is making them non-competitive in the world. So if we're going to reposition American economy to thrive, we must take on health care now. But Senator Gregg, why not, uh, I know we're running out of time, but why not open up this so-called exchange that is in Mr. Baucus's bill to interstate re uh, deregulation and choice? There are so many senators who are in favor of this very simple pro-market competition idea, and yet it never seems to get out of the box, Senator Greg. It makes a lot of sense, and we should do it, and I, I'm not sure that it's not in the back of the bill. I would, I would presume it is in there. Not a uh, but Oh, maybe it isn't, but in any event, so it makes a lot of sense. But I think it's very hard for Senator Merkley to make the case that when you expand the government by a trillion dollars, you're actually helping out in controlling spending in the government. I mean, let's, I mean, it just doesn't pass the smell test. I'll be happy to, to make the case because under the Republican status quo plan, we're going to spend <laughs> 35 to $40 trillion over the next 10 years. If we don't get control of those costs, which come to the budget through Medicaid, through Medicare, then we've done far more damage than if we take on and control costs now. Could this be well, the next course, Social Security? No I mean, Republican status quo plan. That's such an absurd statement that on the face of it, it doesn't even pass the What's the Democratic test? plan to solve right. Medicare? I don't hear any. I don't hear anybody solving Medicare, which well, Mr. Greg is worried about. Well, we've actually put out a proposal that. thing's forty trillion dollars in the hole for the next couple of generations. Well, I don't hear anybody you know, I, solving that. I've actually that. got a very specific proposal on that, and I haven't seen anything from the other side of the aisle on that issue. I've got a very specific proposal on how you insure everyone in this country and do it in a cost-effective way. I haven't seen anything from the other side of the aisle that accomplishes that other than to run up the deficit radically or increase, uh, increase taxes. So uh, we have very specific plans that are certainly not uh, status quo. So I think the, the pejorative of status quo is inappropriate in this discussion. Okay, well, well, Senator Gregg, we'll have to have you back on to talk a little bit more about that plan. Unfortunately, gentlemen, we are out of time, so we have to leave it there. We really appreciate you joining us today. Thank you so much. Thank you.